Italian luxury liner Andrea Doria ran by the Stockholm listed beyond reclaim in the Atlantic on the morning of July 26, 1956. The greatest sea rescue in history was to save almost 1,700 survivors huddled in open lifeboats. But the Doria was doomed. There was a time when the sinking ship would have been a ship lost from human sight forever. But we are to see her again. Even as hearings to determine the cause of the disaster go forward in New York, an expedition of diver photographers undertakes a perilous assignment to find and film the hulk of the sunken Andrea Doria. Their ship is the Samuel Jameson. Skipper John Mulligan steers toward the liner's grave while a crewman scans the surface and an electronic lookout called a pathometer probes the ocean bottom. Chief diver Frederick Dumas is asleep storing his strength for a 15-minute dive that is more exhausting than eight hours work on land. Author James Dugan and diver John Light, expedition organizers and their crewmen, cite the escaping oil from the Doria that still covers the water six weeks after the sinking. The pathometer has found the Doria too. The smudge at far right, looking like a fingerprint, is an actual silhouette of the ship. Dumas watches as the pathometer, by recording sound waves bounced off the sunken Doria, sketches four profiles during four passes over the hull. Floor plans of the liner are brought out and studied by Dumas and the others. Diver Louis Mal, who has come from France with Dumas, checks the expedition's revolutionary underwater camera, so sensitive it can film deep sea details that the human eye cannot see. Next, a weighted descent line is dropped. So precise are the calculations that the weight pierces a porthole just 12 feet from the liner's dead center. Now a dinghy is dropped overboard, and bobbing like a cork on the choppy seas, a Jameson crewman anchors it to the descent line. Both divers wear warm underwear under their tight exposure suits, for the ocean depths are bitter cold. Mal has powdered the slick rubber so that it will slip on easily, and his face is streaked white. Dumas, at 43, has made 10,000 dives and holds the world's depth record using an aqualung. The 23-year-old Mal, co-director of the motion picture The Silent World, starts down, holding the special camera. Underwater, Mal's camera follows Dumas down. At first, he moves through a zone of warm water. Then suddenly he strikes a cold, fast-moving current. He checks the luminous dial of his depth indicator. He is down 130 feet. Far above, the crew is battling a menacing, deadly shark. Unaware, the divers continue downward. Icy water stinging head and hands. The descent continues with seemingly agonizing slowness, while the shark fights stubbornly for its freedom. Mal points to Dumas' depth indicator, 160 feet. Their eyes probe the shadowless twilight. And there she is, the once proud Andrea Doria, entombed in her eternal resting place. A davit comes into remarkable focus as Mal's underwater camera follows Dumas along the ship's left side. Her right side, with its gaping hole, is pressed into the sand. Ranging along the Doria's hull, Dumas fights the dreaded enemy of free divers, the rapture of the depths. The nitrogen in the compressed air Dumas is breathing begins to act like a narcotic. Wits are dulled and caution is forgotten. It takes a trained will to survive. Suddenly a new peril threatens Dumas. His suit has become overinflated, and he is in danger of rising out of control to the surface, almost certain death. So, after eight minutes on the Doria, a forced ascent begins. Dumas must fight against the powerful buoyancy inside his suit that wants to sweep him straight up. He struggles to wrap the descent line around his ankle as a break. And he makes it. He must let the pressure in his ears equalize with the pressure of the air in his mouth and lungs, or his eardrums will burst. Nearing the surface, Dumas has to be careful to avoid the bends, which are also produced by the nitrogen in his compressed air. He waits just below the surface to let the nitrogen escape without forming bubbles inside his body. 
With Dumas in the lead, the two divers surface, 13 minutes after the start of their descent into the Atlantic's forbidding depths. Further dives are impossible. Mal's left ear is caked with blood. His eardrum has burst. The Samuel Jameson, the dead shark lashed to her stern, heads for port, carrying this pictorial record of a dead ship, the Andrea Doria, hidden below the changeless seascape of the Atlantic Ocean.